My name is Laura Harrison, and my grandfather is one of the descendants from Malaga Island. My mother is here with me today. It's her father. When you look back on the uh, huge wall mural on the end there, the smallest little boy there is my grandfather. And this is part of his story of what happened to him and uh, the other descendants from that island. Uh, when this uh, exhibit was opened, they made it possible for the families, the descendants, to go over to Malaga. And it was a, I'd have to say, a spiritual, very spiritual thing to actually see where our families walked, where their home sites were, um, and to see how difficult a life it was. But the fact that they had lived there for over 50 years, and, and in some cases, I'm sure even longer, that there were other people that lived on that island before. What a harsh way to have to live, but they eked out a living. They, they maintained a, a community. I've been asking my mom since I was a little girl, and I'm sure most of you do that. You ask, where did you live? Where did you come from? Who are your people? I've been asking since I was a little girl. The only thing that my mother could ever tell us is that she knew that they were from an island. My grandfather was from an island. that We thought we knew what the name was, but he wouldn't talk about it. He wouldn't talk about where they were from. This wall haunts me. When I first came to this event, to the opening of the exhibit, and I spent time in front of this wall, I had a really, really hard time with this when I looked at the grave sites and the fact that these people were relocated. Nice way of putting it. That's um, probably one of the most horrific events uh, that I'd have to say that occurred with this eviction that has haunted our family. Um, most of you, I'm sure, have lost somebody that you love. and. There's a place that you know that you can go uh, to spend time, you know, remembering the people that you care for. And the thought of somebody coming to your family's grave sites and digging them up would probably be so horrific to any one of you that you can't even imagine it. And that's something that our family has had to cope with and live with and deal with. That somebody cared so little for our people that they would have dug up their graves, 18 people that we know of, put them into five boxes, and plant them someplace that none of them would have agreed to ever go. This document also haunts me. After the governor had come from the island where he was greeted by children like yourselves, dressed up for the event, sang songs to him, showing him their beautiful island, he went back to his office and he made a determination of what was going to happen to these people, including children. He had no idea with all of these people, what was going to happen to their lives afterwards. The people here that are listed are not just African American people, though this was a mixed race community. And they lived together in an era, in a time when most people didn't intermarry or spend time, I think, living in a community where people were both black and white, because it, it was a mixed community. Um, so that was hard for us to understand that, you know, we were separated from people that we knew. You know, that this, that this event took place and that's what happened. People were sent off to different places. My family had a difficult time because they were of African American descent and they looked like that. So they couldn't just leave the island and go to the Phippsburg area. They were not wanted there. My mother's father and her grandmother, grandfather, and three, four siblings, I believe, three siblings, spent time up and down the New Meadow trying to find a place to land this makeshift boat and during a horrific storm, and I guess you guys all know what Maine is like when it's cold and windy and hard to find a place to stay warm. They spent a great deal of time sailing up and down the New Meadow trying to find a place to moor their boats. And in that time, my mother's grandmother became extremely ill. Her grandfather had to leave the children with their mother who was dying and try to find help for her. When he returned, the children were clutching their mother's dead body, trying to keep her body from rolling into the sea, and crying. I mean, I don't think any of you guys can even imagine what that must have been like for a child to lose their family member that way and to see her pass like that, and to know that it was nothing that they could do, and that there were people who didn't want them, and this was your circumstance. You had no control over it. So from that time, our family has grown. We're a huge family at this point. And this is a, an event that we're shocked by, you know, finding out ourselves that this is what happened to our people.
And I think that that's one of the things that I, I'd like people to understand in coming here today is that we didn't go away. Um, we're still here. We have family members who are now teachers. My daughter is in the background. She is a, a teacher in the school system in, uh, uh, in Hartford. And we have family members who are singers. And we have family members who are nurses. And this is two generations away from a group of people who were evicted from an island that were poor. So that gives you an idea of the fact that there are so many things that can come out of such a horrible event that people have learned from and are taking care of ourselves and we are a prosperous family. The fact that there are so many of you that are interested in what happened to this island, to the descendants from that island, and to the people on that island is wonderful. I'm, I'm glad to see it and I'm hoping that uh, it helps create activists out of all of you, that when you see these types of things that happen to people and it happens everywhere, and it happens all over the world, that you'll take a stand and you'll stand up for people.